Okay, this series of tutorials, we're going to look at doing some blended uh, layer masking techniques inside Photoshop. Um, so I'll just show you what I mean. I'm just going to open up some sample files here. So if I go up to Photoshop, File, Open, and uh, here's, here's my files through here. I'll just uh, go to Extra Large Icon so you can see. Um, so the files that I'm about to open are actually just different presented uh, presentations of the same model in a CAD package, any sort of CAD package from Revit to SketchUp um, or ArchiCAD etc. And if you just present different types of views of the exact same model, importantly using the exact same camera viewpoint, you don't want to move your camera in between creating these different views. You want to be able to capture the exact same camera viewpoint. So I've just gone to Photoshop File Open. If I actually just, uh, I can control select all three of these images at once, and if I click on the open command there, open button there, you can see I've just opened up three separate images inside Photoshop, and they're, they're all of the exact same building from the exact same camera viewpoint, or I hope they were sort of close to the same camera viewpoint. Now I'm just going to show you how you can layer these up and then mask one from one to the other to get some, some uh, different sketchy effects to a render. So I'm going to start with, uh, I've just got this one here as I'll use as a starting point I think. So I'll use this as my base and over the top of that I'll place this hidden line one. So I'm just clicking up in here. So if I select everything in there, probably the easiest way of selecting everything I think is Control A. So going Control A, I've selected everything on that screen there at the moment. And if I just copy that to the clipboard, so either Control C or Edit Copy, I'll do the same thing. So that whole image there is in my clipboard. So if I change to the other one there now, and if I paste that in, either Control V or Paste, that has pasted that in here. And if you notice over here on the side, there's here's my layers. It's pasted it in as a separate layer. And I can use the little eyeball here to turn layers off and on. So I can turn that top one off and on. Now, top, the, the order here is very important because you can imagine, you've got to imagine yourself looking from the top down. So if I'm looking from the top down, I'll see the first one. So this one here, layer one, which is this sketch um, mode, hidden line mode, is sitting on top of this other shaded one in the background. So at the moment, it is obliterating the one from below. Now, so you, you can control the opacity here. You've got an opacity control, which I'm doing here at the moment. And you can just sort of slide that through. And you can see how you can sort of change the opacity. So the, the one sitting on top here, which is the um, just the line work one, uh, if I make it rather transparent so that I can see through to the one underneath, I can get a little bit of line work sitting on top of uh, the shaded one before and also it adds a little bit of um, a pastel effect to the overall effect there um, from the, sh if the shaded one so the shaded one's more fully like that if I bring it down to zero so there's zero opacity in other words 100% transparent I can see all the way through to this one that's listed here as background but if I drag my opacity up a little bit and you can see there my camera views are matching pretty well you can also use this transparency opacity to sort of test whether the camera viewpoints from your CAD package were lining up perfectly. Uh, I might just demonstrate, sometimes they're not. So you might get something that comes in. I'll just go to uh, Control T is Transform. And you might get something that sort of comes in and you can, you know, so maybe something like that. And you can see that by adjusting this opacity here, you'll be able to tell that, oh look, they just don't line up properly. And then you could use, using Control T or Layer Transform, you could you just play around here and try and move this into the right spot like I'm doing here at the moment and stretching it back out that way and I can see it's got to stretch out this way. And you, if you haven't sort of got your scales right, it won't do too much about your camera viewpoint, but if you haven't got your scales perfectly right, you can fine tune um, your your viewpoints and your viewpoints and get them sort of at least overlapping like this if they are the same camera angle. So I've manually got that pretty well back to what it was before. 
but I'm going to just use my history here and um, take my history back to uh, where I paste. Oh, okay, I saw, right. I've got to, I might, oh, I can cancel the transform, that's what I want to do up here. Sorry. Um, so I haven't done that transform now, and as you can see, we're back to the point here. I'll just close that history back up. We're back to the point here where everything's overlapping just nicely. So what I wanted to show you what you could do, you could either just use that, a blend of opacity, to get a different effect on your drawing, a little bit of a blend of two drawing, two, two images together. So rather than all shaded, or rather than all pen sketched, you can sort of get a bit of a blend halfway between the two. Um, but I'm going to put my opacity fully up again and show you what you can do with layer masking. On this particular layer up the top here, I'm going to create um, a thing called the layer mask. And I'll do that from the layer menu up here, layer, layer mask, and I'll just do the reveal all or hide all they'll just have the exact opposite effect from each other. So it really doesn't matter in terms of what I'm going to show you to do. I'm just going to go reveal all. So I've got to reveal all layer mask there. Now, what this like, you'll notice that um, over in the layer box over here, you've got the, the native layer sitting there, but you've also got this extra layer mask as well. And you can decide to actually um, be editing the base layer or the layer mask. So you've got to sort of click and make sure that you've got the layer mask active. Now what the layer mask will do is that if I start drawing with a brush uh, in black over here, anywhere where I draw on top of that, see I'm putting a, a black line, you notice in my layer mask here, I've actually got, it's got a black brush and drawn a bit of a, a black line through the middle of my drawing. And you can see that wherever you get black going, that starts to reveal, in other words, change the top layer to be completely transparent so that it reveals the layer in underneath. And you can create some nice effects just with a brush like that, just with doing, doing a few things there, something like that. Okay, so that, that's one thing that you can do. If you want to have a more controlled effect over that, um, I'll just clear that layer mask. Uh, I'll, yeah, I'll just clear that layer mask, and probably I think the easiest way to do that is to go up to Edit Fill, and I'll fill that in completely with white. So just make sure that I'm using white, uh, and go OK. So I've just filled my layer mask with white again. So instead of using a brush this time, just as a demonstration, I'll show you, I'll just go and find my gradient tool, which is here. And I'm using gradient from black to white. You can see here, or up, up the top here, is where I'm using my gradient colors. And I, now, I'll, I'll show you this first gradient uh, to start with. I'll cancel, just cancel out of that. And drop that down. I'll show you the first gradient, which is this one in the top left-hand corner here first. That's the one that's open by default. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a black to white gradient, pick a point on the screen, and drag and let go. And what that's doing for me is that's putting a layer gradient, a, a gradient, black to white gradient, as you can see on top of my layer mask. And wherever my layer mask is black, it's, it's revealing all of that layer through to the layering underneath. Now this first type of gradient that we used up here lets you just keep going with different gradients and it puts another gradient on, wiping out the first gradient that you just did. So while that type of gradient is selected, you can just keep going and have a look at different gradient effects from top to bottom and so on and so forth and get a different effect from there. The difference with the second gradient tool, if I just, uh, I might just get rid of that gradient. So once again, if I go up to Edit Fill and make sure I'm white, so I'm back to a plain white layer mask again. Um, what I might just do here this time is I'll change to the second type of gradient and what this type of gradient does is you do that gradient there once and notice the black image that I've got through there and then you do it again and it just adds that gradient on top of the other gradient if you notice what's happening here from the bottom so you can sort of just end up adding more bits of gradient over the top of what you've already got so there's the difference between those two types of gradient effects there um, so I'll just um, maybe do maybe do something like that where 
the, the image starts out being sketchy mode just in line work here but then becomes shaded over the top there. Now if I wanted to then possibly do something on top of that with the rendered one that I had there before and just play around with some different um, effects here in the rendered if it's got it I'll just go to that rendered one that I've got there once again to show you what we did before control A selects everything and then I'll go to the one that I'm using where I've got the layers and then control V will paste that in as a new layer um, Okay, something hasn't happened there, I'll just get control Z. Just, oh, of course it didn't. Uh, so, sorry, go to the rendered one. So control A selects everything. Control C copies it to the clipboard. And then go back to this other one here and control V. So I've just layered in now a rendered version all the way over the top there. So if I wanted to now do another layer mask there, so if I just go back to um, layer, layer mask, uh, and this time I'll do a hide all, which will just work completely the opposite. What I've got to do here is I've got to start putting white. You'll notice my, because I did a hide all layer mask, my layer mask is black, and at the moment it's revealing everything there um, on top of it. So if I change what my pen's over here, so I'm drawing with white, over here, just using that switch arrow there to switch from black to white, and then I pick up a brush, um, I can start to then reveal, um, well, draw white on top of, so that it's sort of taking the rendered image that's sitting on top there now and adding that in. So I can add little bits of the rendered version up here to give a little bit more realistic effect up around there if that's what we wanted to do and then it's becoming shaded and then it's becoming sketchy so I've now got a, like a blend of the three different images all blending through and then coming into the one image all right that's um, added that's um, the techniques in layer mask blending in Photoshop